This recurring challenge is called binary search tree insertion. So we're going to receive different values and we need to insert them at the appropriate position in the tree. I have this example here. Let's say this is our tree here and we want to insert the value six. Remember that this is a binary search tree, meaning that if we take a note, whatever is on the left of that node, the values should be less than the value of the current node. So for instance, two here is less than four, so it's on the left. One is less than two, so it's on the left of two. Three is greater than two, so it's on the right of two. But three, it's in the left subtree because the value three is less than the value four. So back to my question here, where do we need to insert the number six? Six will be on the right of four. So we go to the right here. We are at the node seven now. Six is less than seven. So we'd have to insert the number six on the left of seven, just like this. So you can look at this class here. It has these public member variables. So the values, the left and right pointers for the left child and the right child, we can have a constructor, which we can use to initialize the value of our data here for every node that we create. And the left child and the right child are both always going to be set to null. So I'm going to show you how to solve this in C language. But for now, let's start with C++. So here we have this function here. And now we need to verify first, what do we do if the train doesn't have any nodes? Or if we are at a left child or a right child, which is null. So in this case, we're going to verify if the node that currently we are processing is null. If it is, then we're going to create a new node that is going to hold the data here, this value, and we're going to return it. So if the tree is empty, this is going to serve as the first node in the tree. If the tree is not empty, this will evaluate to false, meaning that we are going to go here, continue with the rest of the function. Now we need to ask ourselves, is the value that we're trying to insert less than the value of the current node that we're at? If it is, then this means that we need to go to the left. And in this case, we're going to use recursion. So we're going to say the left child of that node equals whatever this function returns. So we are going to initiate a new function call. And this means we are going to go back here. We're going to verify is the left child null because here we pass the left child to our function. So we're going to verify is that left child null. If it is, then we're going to create a node initialize the data attributes with the value that we want to insert, and we're going to return that node. So when this function returns, it's going to return the new node that we just created, and we're going to assign that to the left child of the node that we're processing. If the left child isn't null, then we're going to go here, and we're going to start again another function call and verify, is that node null? If it is, then we're going to create a node and so on. We don't necessarily have to go to the left. That's why we have this condition here. So we are saying, at every level, we're going to verify, should we go to the left or to the right? And we're going to answer that question by verifying if the value that we want to insert is less than or greater than the value of the node that we are at. Now, of course, you can be more specific to only have less than or greater than because this code here would also work if a node's value and the value that we want to insert are both equal, but that's enough to pass this challenge. So when we are done, we return the roots. So let me submit this code now, and then I will show you quickly in C what are the variations of this code. So we've just passed all the test cases. So I'm going to come here, select C language, and this is the code. Everything is very similar. We are still checking here, is the root null? If it is, then we're going to create a node called new node, but it's a struct node pointer. And we're going to use the malloc function to allocate memory. And that memory should be enough for the size of a node. And then we are going to cast that pointer from a void pointer to a struct node pointer. And then we're going to initialize the value of our data member variable using this data parameter here. And then we're going to set both the left child and the right child to null for that node that we just created. And then we're going to return that node so that when we go here, next time, if the tree is not empty, or a node is not null, then we can use our same condition logic to update the left child or the right child of the nodes as we traverse our tree. I hope this explanation was clear to you. If not, let me know in the comment section. But when we are done with that, then we can simply return the roots. So I'm going to submit this code now. And you can see that we just passed all the test cases. So that's it for this Akron challenge. It was called binary search tree insertion. 
If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you turn on your YouTube notifications and I'll catch you next time.